Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, welcome back. My name is Tim Simons. I play Jonah Ryan on the television show Veep. Hi, this is Matt Walsh. I played Mike McClintock, and you're listening to Second in Command, the lowest view from the tallest ladder. No, okay, so one thing that we talked about, Husky. Oh, Your byline. Brian Husky, Leon West is our guest. We're today. just going to get you right in here. Yeah, yeah, I'm Brian Husky. I played Leon West and, and Wesk. Wesk, wow. They never, they never got the name right. It was Silent West. K. Yeah, that's why it's Silent K with a T. <laughs> In parentheses, I, I think right right away we should say this is like the first full episode that's coming out since we've been with all things comedy. The recording schedule is con- no wait no this is season four. We're all um never mind. Yeah, cut this, this will be later. Yeah. This will be cut later. It out. I'm yeah. so sorry. Leave it in there though, but cut it out. Um, I I can't. Oh, I lowest rung of the highest ladder. That's right. Yeah, let's just go right back to the beginning. Is that? I love that. I love the humanity that you guys have shown already. That that you're being willing to fail. That you're fallible. That you yeah. are failing. Um, yeah, just keep it in there. Uh, yeah, we don't do any work actually. We, <laughs> Aaron does it all. We still have not figured out like a good tagline. Oh, we yeah. argued about it the entire time. Yeah. Tell me, wait, wait. What is the view? A view from the show from a view of the show from the lowest rung of a very high ladder. It takes and a something about the insider's outsider for a while, right? Yeah, but I don't know. I think we were like messing around with. with I like something. that one. The the lowest All right, say rung. it back if you like it. Say it back. Okay, so I'll say it back to you. Uh, it's the show. It's the lowest rung from the highest ladder. Oh my god. See is that it? It's not good. It's, no, not, it's good. not good. It doesn't stick it with doesn't, you. It takes. A, it's too much mental work but yeah. then what is the other one the insiders outside I don't know there was, like uh, a, it was a fragment it's, yeah it's, it's a like fragment a, of one that also failed yeah but we never really uh we should hire a Google chat robot to you should just out. say the only podcast that talks about a show that's not on the air anymore that's true <laughs> that that's not really true though no no we no, no, that's you, true we're the only one yeah you're the only one we started it yeah and we we're well ending what it. is Nobody the air you mean live episodes is that what air means these days yeah okay yeah. okay because it does live on yeah, that's true. Uh, one yeah. of my favorite things that uh, has happened it. recently is when we watch, uh, <laughs> you watch a television show, and then right after, they have like 15 minutes of interviews with people telling you exactly what the television show meant. Oh, if you mean, I love the show, I'm going to watch that stuff. Oh, you mean like at the end of Succession? Yeah. yeah or, or Station whatever. Eleven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched your Station Eleven wrap-up stuff. I found that insightful. I like that, yeah. Get if I love the show, I'm in. Yeah. If it's, if, I don't really, I, I don't enjoy hearing from the actors as much. I love hearing from like, yeah. the creators. Yeah. I like understand, the, but I think there's that part of me that I don't mind having that information. I just don't want it directly after I've seen it. I want it like... I want it years later when we've had some time to soak it in. And that's not just me saying like, oh, we're doing a rewatch podcast. Not even years later. Right. I want some time for it to sink in before. I'll say this in regards to succession. Sometimes I'm like, I need you to explain what some of these bizarre aphorism filled like, you know, half sentences mean. Because I was like, I think they're trying to close a deal or they're trying to fuck a bull. I don't know. They did an amazing thing uh, a couple episodes ago. The one where they were uh, uh, do like where they were in Switzerland or in Norway. Yeah, the guy. And like at some point they like the writers and directors understood that like nobody that watches this show (laughs) knows anything about business. So they were talking about like, okay, how do we explain the deal terms? And they're like in that ski lift and he just writes the number 144 yeah, on a yeah, piece yeah. of paper and he's like above this good below, below this, this bad, bad. Yeah. so that all the fucking idiots who don't know anything yeah. about business or money are like oh cool yeah. that's all I need to know yeah wait, wait. yeah it's interesting too because Silicon Valley had that stuff but they would get a little in the weeds with it oh yeah Do you know what I mean they would go really deep on the deal and the technology and right sometimes you would get a little lost in it but I feel like succession has navigated for the common man in a, in a really funny way. Yeah, I'm glad I, I I said I wanted to talk about succession on this. Yeah, and I so think honestly I, we're. Well, I mean, we're obviously <laughs> talking about season four, episode four, Tehran. Yeah, uh, I say Tehran. 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 Yeah. Well, not Tehran. 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 I don't know. Hey, Aaron, could you do us a favor and Google how to pronounce that in Persian? How to say it? Sound how? How do you? Capital of Iran. Yeah. Yeah. Just how do you? Pronounce it. Pronounce it. Tehran. 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 Yeah. Tehran. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> you, <laughs> you didn't have like a lot of confidence there. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Tehran. Yeah. To run, 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 run. That's mm. pretty. A to run, run. I, I, Leon West featured prominently 
in big. this episode. Now, yeah. this is your first time on the podcast. It is. We, I've talked to you many times, like, oh, we got it. And I think we may have scheduled you. I think we actually we a, scheduled you a solid year and three months ago. Yeah, there, yeah. there was one day that it, they, I think it was Dale out there, just like, eh, everything, everything broke, or we can't get our Zoom account online, or yes. whatever. Yeah. Whatever it was. But you're back. We're back. And uh, I would like to talk about your entry into the show briefly before mm-hmm. we get into Ty- Tehran. Let's do it. So, like all of us, you auditioned multiple times for this show, didn't you? Yes. I, I made it down to the callback round. For which role? For the role that they decided to go slightly taller with Tony Hale. Yes. So, I was up for Tony's, and that was a crazy experience in that Tony was attached to another show, and they weren't going to let him go. Oh, that's right. So they literally, my agents and managers literally told me, he can't audition, the part is yours. And then later on, they're like, actually, he's going to audition. Why? Um, they're just, he's going to, and so they were trying to get him out because he didn't want to do the show, apparently. And so it then, uh, you know, then I was like, oh, okay. So I had to like go, and it was just me and him. I think, yeah, I think yeah. y- you guys had multiple people that you're battling oh right? you weren't in the the final slam slam no, no, i was at the final yeah, slam. you were there he was there at the yeah because i because when i saw tim i had only known tim in the context of uh commercial auditions yeah because you had been running rooms and and it yes. you a lot of those behind camera and so i i and i think i've apologized to you a thousand times and i'll do it again i was like i'm i was so embarrassed i was like oh you're running the camera on this thing and you're, <laughs> and you're like no i'm actually auditioning i was like oh Okay. Oh my God. I'm a piece of shit. I'm sorry. Oh no, no. don't. But God, do I, I would do the same thing if I had seen somebody. If I had seen somebody 400 times, because I, I saw you a lot when yeah, I was yeah. running camera. Yeah, yeah. If I had seen somebody 400 times, and right. then on the 401st <laughs> time, you they were doing something different. Like yeah. that's 100% not your fault. Yeah, because I never and I it, I was so slow to learn that many actors will you know run audition rooms and stuff and be part of that uh and i just never put that together i was like oh i think that's just a casting person yeah so when you were there i was like oh this is confusing and it was also just terrifying i mean yeah. you you and i i think we went out to lunch yeah. afterwards and i'll tell a little story a little humanity story about myself that morning i was so nervous that i I might have crapped my pants just a little bit. Oh. Just a little bit. Just oh. a little bit to be like, oh, okay. And that actually helped me. Like once I, because <laughs> I was just standing there getting things together and kind of like busy, busy myself. And then, you know, I kind of had a little. Yeah, it moment. was high pressure though. That it was crazy. That's one of the highest pressure rooms I've ever it walked was into. That was Wait, one wait. of the most stressful. Because it, because you wanted it, it and you knew it was a good show and you were perfectly, I, f- you were perfectly viable candidate for it. Yeah. You could totally see you doing it. Yeah. 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 And also to have then, to have also been going. And improv friendly, which is another oh, sweet spot. Yeah. That was like, and that's I, like really exciting. Yeah. And I think it's for me, it's like, as I kept. I was at a place in my career where I was like, things were advancing for me, and I could tell like, oh, I'm, I'm, this is, things are good, and like things are moving forward, and so that felt like a quantum leap mm-hmm. to be, to have to get to like improvise with uh, Julia like three different times, and and you know, what I mean, it's like you kind of like, it 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 did away with the the idea of like oh my god she's this kind of legend to me to like oh she's another actor and we're you know we're we're doing it you were doing it you yeah. know that was great and armando it was is great that, yeah you know. it, and it is validation to get through each hoop it really does yeah. like oh i guess i can I, I guess i am good at this you know what i mean yeah. each level as we've talked about like that uh like the test day when we were all in at like you know in like the, the Manchurian big, candidate the, room. the Manchurian candidate room <laughs> with shadow HBO execs in the background yeah. the everybody kind of had a different version of their stress that they thought nobody else was under like yeah. in that way that like yours of like oh like Tony can't even do this so and then all of a sudden he's he there do. and it's like oh he maybe he can maybe he can't but I'm and my stress continued they didn't give us an answer for a month yes they wow. over over Christmas yeah like it just ruined my Christmas I I, like, uh, <laughs> I like I knew late I knew like an knew hour that. and a half later right yeah. Yeah. But like to be on the line for that for an, for a month, it was rough. It's rough, man. It was really crazy. Was but rough. one thing but I remember, Tony will say, he did okay. 
He did okay. <laughs> yeah, he did okay. He did okay. Let's not go too far. Yeah. yeah. He, he yeah. did fine. Yeah. He was a good stand-in for you, Brian. He was. Yeah. I would say that. Yeah, a lot of people were like, well, it's kind of a husky take on it. But and then, I wrote, then he made it his own, which I thought was, <laughs> he was admirable. He kind of wasn't in the text. You know, I was kind of doing what the text had. And he kind of made it his own, which yeah, is yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I remember, though, when we were all leaving <laughs> the room. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, the different kind of stresses. No, oh, yeah, but yeah. nobody else was testing for Dan. Yep. Uh, and so, but Reed right. was like, if they don't have anybody to compare you against, you're fucked because then they don't know if they're making the right choice because they ha- they don't have a choice. They have one person, so he's right. under that stress. Yeah. Um, but as we were leaving, uh, uh, as we were leaving, Arm came into the big conference room, shook everybody's hand, and yeah. was like, I. Uh, we are going to talk about where it all lands, but like I promise, if anyone, if it doesn't work out from today, we will, we're going to find a spot for you on yeah. the show somewhere. Yeah, and I think by and large he did. Yeah, yeah. I think the only, uh, to my memory, uh, Chris Gethard was there. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. And I talked to him one time. He's like, yeah, we they wanted him to do something, and I, don't, I think he just had a conflict and he couldn't do it. And then you know it's that kind of thing of like, well, we'll get you back on, and then the machine starts moving and, yeah. and stuff. Um, but yeah, that that when Arm said that, that was that was another thing where I was like, ah, this guy does it right. Yeah. Like he really does as far as like a creative endeavor, I think that's the best groundwork to just be like, hey, I mean, because he said like literally is like there's something about you that I'm interested in that I think will serve us. Yeah. And for, you know, a director or creator to say that to an actor is great because we, we are like empty vessels just wanting completely. to be filled with yeah, yeah. uh with but the, also it's not a total like hollywood compliment like you're all geniuses and i fucking yeah, yeah, love yeah. you like yeah. getting a compliment out of arm was rare like yeah. he loved you and he was so it was the best job ever yeah but he wasn't like effusive in the way that you're used to in auditions like right. oh my god you're a genius i totally. love you yeah. he said all of you serve a purpose. <laughs> and, <laughs> do you know what I mean? And it's like, actually, that's cool. I like that because that's, I you just want to hear more. what's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. just want to hear what's true. Because I feel the other one is just an empty thing of just like, yeah. you know, let's, let's just keep them on the hook a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And the other one is Or like, just to cover their own nervousness yeah. and say, you're a genius. We love you. It does. And it levels the p- playing field in a way that you're kind of saying like, all right, my job is like, I create something and I direct it. That's my job. Your job is an actor. So you're, you're good at as an actor, yeah. And in, in the thing I'm making, you'll be great, you yeah. Know? And that's like hiring that's great. a that's hiring a contractor who's or a plumber, be yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The I remember Tony talking about that, like in the first season. Uh, Tony, he ended up playing uh, Gary. Really d- stuck to the text. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry. No, you stick to the text. He kind of he did whatever. He I was just, fine. I was so distracted by it. I was like, God, this guy's so tall in every scene. I mean, you're tall too, but it yeah. works. But he was just like he, he was the distractingly tall. Yeah, he was the distractingly tall. One. Yeah, you guys weren't in scenes a lot together. He would take. He would talk about how like he wasn't used to the the English directors because mm. he had only worked with American directors who, in between each take, would come out and oh, say, so good. "That was so good." Yeah, yeah. Let's try this. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. like, you, they would get this little like this little uh, little treat Here's of a, a compliment. Here's yeah, yeah. just some candy about how great you are. <laughs> And the British yeah. directors would just come in and be like, all right, let's try it again this time. Like, they're not unhappy. Yeah. No. But they are not, like, it wasn't, like. They're not fawning over you and filling well, you up. Well, that's what somebody, yes. somebody had to explain to me is, like, it, if they're not, even if they don't say anything, then they're happy. Like, they're yes. just going to say something if something's wrong or yeah. it's not working. So, but I was like, oh, my God, the silence means that they've given up. They've just given up on the scene. They've given up on what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you start to fill in all that that kind of negative, not true stuff. Because yeah. we are used to candy. We like candy. What was the first episode? Like, yeah. it, it didn't take very episode? long for you was, to actually get out to Baltimore with us. No, like, it was the sec. It was yogurt. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. That's, oh, that's right. Yes. Yeah, second yeah. episode. So, like, you're, you're like, we're going to find a spot for you. And the show came yeah. really quickly. And I had a... I had, they offered me, Patrick Fischler played uh, the photographer. photographer. Mm -hmm. And I checked in with Allison. I was like, do you, to your knowledge, is this character going to be around? And she's like, I haven't really seen it. And and, and then she let me know that my character was based on um, Frank Rich. Frank Rich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, that feels like it might have a little bit more. (laughs) 
a little yeah. more life to it. Like some legs. Oh, so yeah. you, some you legs. said I'll wait. Kind I, of. I said I'd wait. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. Oh, good. That was like the. That's the one good showbiz move I think I made in my life. That is though. I don't know if I would have done that back in the day. Like I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I completely felt that way. But I also felt. I think for me, I was like, oh, you thought of me uh, in terms of like a big a sustained ongoing character and then kind of offering like maybe a one or two. Right. And so I will also say my ego probably stepped in. Yeah. Um, which it doesn't often. It usually yeah. is that kind of thing. Like, yeah, whatever. I'll do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that might have also been one of the only times that an actor would have been able to make that choice on the show only yeah. because that was probably one of the so only early. times that you could have that you would have been able to see four or five scripts ahead. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like there was no, because I think baseball was three. If I want to say, yep. if yogurt was two. Baseball was three. Baseball was three. It was. It, was, it wasn't two. It wasn't obviously, two. and w it wasn't one. Baseball, I think, was our third episode. I popped up in that for a microsecond. I think. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. Um, you were talking to Mike across. The, I can see you, Mike. Oh, whatever. that you, yeah. you? No, that was me. No, you oh, came out. You came out. You were you were addressing a, a press yeah uh, corral, and we just made, made a joke about it. alcoholism or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. And I, I thought that I was. I had that moment with Dan where I just said, "Like you, uh, you bleach plucked asshole. I'm going to be, you know, a nightmare." I thought that yeah. he was going to be my target, but strangely, I just always hated you yeah because <laughs> i had to deal with you yeah yeah that was my job i thought i was gonna ruin dan uh yeah. i'm gonna do the thing where i talk about just the i'm gonna talk about the whatever the summary gonna, of the episode the summary of the episode oh my god i love that too. uh Please. season four episode four uh tehran directed by becky martin as we mentioned mm -hmm. last week uh i think holds the record for the most episodes directed wonderful yeah. wonderful person uh incredible director um uh, story by Armando Iannucci, Ian Martin, and Tony Roach, and was written by Ian Martin and Tony Roach. Uh, uh, Ian Martin, God, he's so incredible. We'll yeah. get into that later. Selena goes to Iran to free de uh, to free a detained American reporter named Leon West. Wesk. Uh, so Leon Wesk. <laughs> Uh, Dan finds new work at Sidney Purcell's offices after being fired from the White House. Gary and Mike panic as they realize they've been left in the airport in Tehran. That's Doyle right. stands in for the president at an eight, uh, LGBTQ plus event, and Kent's polling may cause trouble for Selena. Catherine gets engaged to Jason, and Selena brings in a new senior advisor, Karen Collins. I, in rewatching that, I was like so amazed at how many storylines yes are. yeah it's like there's an f story you know what i mean yes and, and, but they're all they're all in equal concert it's yeah so cool they really packed a lot into this one yeah. yeah i agree that was like a you're serving a lot of threads in this one yeah. i agree uh as as we're going through we actually i asked people for questions, questions. Nice. and so i'm gonna like kind of i look. couldn't post your facebook ad because i don't know my facebook uh username or password Guys, I, I'm, so, I'm never we're so good i'm never on uh and i asked my sister and she doesn't know it either so we talked about this uh, we talked about this on last week's episode i see you understanding like looking inward and seeing that you're bad with technology yeah. but i don't see the work toward fixing it that's I, another example of you passing that I'm just waiting till chat GPT does it for me and then yeah. it won't matter. And then I'll be a musician too and I'll be an accountant <laughs> and I'll have my own ad agency. Like, I'll surpass you. You'll be a different person. Yeah. I'll just be a different person. I'm just checking to see uh, uh, if there's a relevant question. If there's a relevant question that isn't sort of specifically about one. So while Tim's doing yeah. that. Yeah. You said Frank Rich was very exciting for you. Was there any other research you did before you say landed in that first episode to kind of understand how you're going to approach the character? Um, no, I mean, yeah. Research I or a take? Like, oh, I know someone. I kind of, they had pitched him to me as just like a pain in the ass with a real disdain for this administration. Okay. And so... And I just reading the the text, um, it just felt like it, it, it's like in in balance to to kind of the buffoonery of you guys. It, it would be nice to have a, a, an air of authority, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I also I also decided that he his only authority is in in what he can write, 
and that he has guys over him. Like he has his kind of like, okay, yeah, uh, you know, his hierarchy and the Veep hierarchy too. Yeah. So I always, I always had that that there was an anger that somebody else is always yelling at him. Yeah. So that's why I think I shit on you so much. And stuff, <laughs> yeah. Because it's just easy pickings, you know. Sure, it's a fun dynamic. Yeah, yeah. And you play anger really well. Oh, I, I always you. like when you're angry and stuff. Uh, I didn't see any questions uh, that were sort of like general about well, the. Well, that was a futile all. exercise. Well, well, I feel like you guys got the to listeners a are bit. just going to turn I, off. I will tell. Can I tell my favorite? part of, yeah. of what happened behind yeah. the scenes oh guys. yes no this yeah, is this oh is. god this is what we need yeah so this was <clears throat> so i looked on imdb it didn't list it. i'm trying to figure out there's a couple things i'm trying to figure out if this is the first episode that my friend bo webb was a yeah. oh he, yeah a lifelong second, friend yeah yeah, yeah life you guys went friend. to high school together, we right? we know each other since fourth grade we've been yeah, friends both great and so Bo uh, became a uh, another camera operator on the show, and I think it was in season four because it was in. Was that the last season you guys did? In in? Last season okay. we were in Baltimore, yeah. Yeah, so that's when he started. So it was really amazing for he and I after growing up and just d doing dumb videos and stuff together, like working on this oh. show together. You know, that was amazing. He one time he, on my phone he showed me like clips of one of the movies you guys made together yeah. in high school. So dumb. Yeah. So what a what a small fucking world. Yeah. 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 Okay. And I found that that's so comforting to me. You know what I mean? Like especially because I love you guys and I loved like that like Matt, you became such a big part of my life through improv and stuff, and just that that's that all kind of like swoops together at some point. And I yeah. Like that. But the, when we were shooting the the scenes on um, Air Force One, mm -hmm. the original scenes, uh, we were reading them through. And when, I don't know if you guys have talked about this, but normally there'll be, you, you guys would do a read through and kind of like an improv read through. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. You're like you'll read it and kind of add, people add their stuff. And I can't remember if we didn't get to do that with this one. But we were doing, we we're blocking it. And then Julia just was like, guys, she's not that dumb. We, you keep making her so dumb. And she's, she's the president now. We can't mm -hmm. keep playing this game. And it felt. She said that to the writers, not to she you. That, she said that to the writers okay. and to Becky. Okay. And, you know, we're just working the scenes and there's a lot more kind of like um, her kind of like deer in the headlights as she's kind of the, I, I think they revealed a little sooner that I knew that um, she had that I was being detained so she could a, get a photo op um, she's like she's not that dumb you know so <clears throat> they they said okay we'll fix it and so the, this is one of the most exciting like entertain like show business things they just we got our food we ate lunch and we sat with the writers and they wrote a whole new scene for me and Kevin Dunn to do. So that scene where he sits down and he's all ambient up uh -huh. and he's kind of talking me through of like, look, you just shut shut up. And I was unpacking like, cause mm -hmm. they, they also said like, I think we need to unpack for them what's going on. Yeah, um, That was his written then and they like handed us the scene. And I remember at one point you just said like, oh, don't, you you learned the scene before you shoot the scene on this show a lot of times. <laughs> but that so that entire scene when you're on Air Force One with Ben was written at lunchtime the yeah. day that we were shooting it. Yeah, and we had like fifteen minutes maybe. So was it. the old version Julia in the room? So they wrote a completely <clears throat> new scene where she wasn't in the room. I I honestly can't remember. It was more the business, you know. So I come in, I'm hungry, um, I stink because I haven't had a bath. Yeah. They give me the deodorant. I think in the original one, I get in one, once there's a reveal that I'm, I've been detained, um, I go at her faster and harder. Uh -huh. And she was also sort of saying like her status now is like, yeah. And that's one thing she and I talked about. I was like, should I like, what is my deference level to you? Because yeah. I also want something from you, but I, you know, I'm not a fan. But yeah. so she's like, I think the president, you're always going to kind of, you know, that yeah, because they can cut you out, too. Like, ultimately, yeah. you're not on the plane anymore. If you're totally yeah. whatever, yeah, they'll just keep you out. I mean, yeah. I think that was something that they kind of, it wasn't a fight, but it was a conversation from the very beginning of the show because I think the the Brits were so used to, <clears throat> especially from the thick of it, like, making all the politicians low, low status yeah. and the vice president being a low status job. That was kind of a, a like a was a conversation from the beginning that Julia was. Always, I remember mm -hmm. at least Julia being on top of because even if the vice president is a low status job, you still there's a certain decorum that you have to act 
with uh, around the vice president and especially when they became especially when she becomes the president like, right there is just like there's no more fucking around yeah there and i think that was a real push and pull with her of like how do we find comedy and also still give her the status that the that the position deserves yeah 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 because it felt like when in that same episode uh lynn and parham comes in who plays karen on the show mm -hmm. um she's brought in to be her senior advisor advisor yeah, yeah. And so that that was one of those moves where it's like, oh, she's starting to kind of shake things up. She started to sort of ravel the cage of like what her her crew was, you know. Yeah. Because um, you you know you were you, you were sent off into your own storyline at a certain point. Yeah. You know, and then well, in this like run up to season four, what's happening is now that she's president, there's all these people who are getting shifted around. Like Dan became mm -hmm. the scapegoat last episode. They were going to fire Ben, but they held on to Ben. Erickson got pulled in. Amy was not told of any of this stuff. She wasn't yeah. told who they're going to fire, and she wasn't right. told about Erickson's introduction. So now Karen's getting pulled in. So it's it's a lot of like Amy's place being focused on. I think like they're really like, what's Amy's job anymore? Yeah. Sort of. And obviously, it's like being in the Trump administration. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, she's <laughs> yeah, she has some Trump-esque qualities. Yeah, yeah. She's a rattlesnake. I. <laughs> uh, Right off the bat, we uh, Dan's at his house uh, has a mother. Dan has a that's mother. Right. <laughs> that's the only time I think she ever appeared in the episode. That a, he's a, got episode. a he's got a vibe. Dan generally has a vibe of like no man of woman born. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. can't imagine that there was ever a maternal right. that he grew inside of another human because that yeah. could mean that he had some sort of human contact. Yeah. Yeah. Or like human empathy that would have been ingrained. It's sort of yeah. like a la so yeah, he does have a mom. Well, I think they do that at times to humanize him. Like when you got groped by Teddy for the first time, he showed a little humanity like, well, that's fucked up. Yeah. So I think this is a moment because Dan's on the skids now. He's mm -hmm. out of the administration and he's taking any lobbying job or any returning, taking any call that gets returned. Yeah, yeah. I made a couple notes here because uh, I am sort of noticing and I now notice it a lot more in shows mm -hmm. where I'm just like, Oh, the writer just had a really good joke, and this scene just needed a joke. Yeah, you know what I mean. And there was something about like uh, you don't send a get well card when you get plastic surgery. Yeah, there's no oh, yeah, yeah. Re I mean, like that's a really funny joke, and it's something Dan would say. There's no real reason for it to be in yeah. there. Yeah, but yeah. I just I could see Tony Roach just being like remembering that, remembering. Oh yeah, I had this. Like I've never been able to use that. I'll oh, throw that so in funny. there. That's a good one. Well, also, there was the floating joke list. Remember we talked yes. about jokes were being passed around, and there was like a catalog of jokes that they could go back to that they never got to use I, there was also a toothpaste joke i should i should take better notes it just says the toothpaste joke uh in dan's room in yeah. dan's scene i don't remember dan's it. Scene. I don't um that. uh anyway I, that was the so whatever the toothpaste tooth whatever the toothpaste joke was i feel like that was another one of just yeah. like that came so from the joke, let me ask you joke page. leon mm. why was <clears throat> Leon detained and why was he in Iran? Start that, with that. That was never clarified. Because the press was already on their plane. Yeah. So was all of the press detained for two weeks or just Leon? No, just, just Leon. Just Leon. Okay. And I had asked, like, why is he detained? And they were just like, oh, he just was, he was here and he got detained. Okay. So that was never given to me. Okay. Um, was it, I feel like it was mentioned, though, it was some sort of, like, it was it was mentioned was it mentioned in that news clip they it was just, either mentioned in the news clip or in that scene where where the guy says something about like you know you're a day late and mike's like uh, his english he's his english isn't oh, very yeah, good yeah. <laughs> yeah. but he has great english yeah i feel like this there was a specific in there i totally missed it if, if, i if think my was. memory of the whole explanation was that the fact that Leon was there, tipped them off that there was some secret mission happening. So that's that's why they detained him. Mm. But what I didn't understand is the press plane was probably following Selena from her Middle East trip, yes, and then they came that, yeah. to... So you were always separate from the press junket plane. I yes. might, yeah, my understanding was that yeah. he was there doing some story and somehow like probably crossed the line, and they're like, okay... We're just going to keep you here. Yeah, or um, or the or the president was supposed to. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Mm. Uh, the uh, the moment uh, 
after we see Dan, who I think in that moment gets a call from Sidney Purcell about like, oh, yeah, like a job would be great. Uh, you know, so he's going to go start working for Sidney Purcell. We'll see them again later. But the first big scene is on Air Force One. And this trip has gone incredibly well. And yeah. we get like the manic Julia running in. Yeah, yeah. Which out. made me think was Selena on her pills again, because that's a thing that gets... In and out. Obviously, Ben's yeah. on pills, and the way she was so like ADD. I, I want to fix this table. I want to redo the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. Like, I wonder if the happy pills was in the script or if she was playing that. That yeah. actually is one of the questions that we got uh, from the second in command. Uh, I'll say it just the second in command subreddit. I'm going to be like posting like, oh, we're going to be recording this episode. Ask Thank us you questions. for doing all it's that. R uh, slash R R slash second in command. Uh, um, to me, this is oh from Fiona Wallace fan. I don't know. I don't. She, maybe she's. I don't know if her name is Fiona Wallace or if she <laughs> she's a is fan a fan of herself. Of herself yeah, I think that's it. Says to me, this is one of the most underrated episodes of season four. Uh, I've seen many people comment on Selena's behavior at the start of the episode, speculating that she's on drugs or something because of how hyper she is. Was it the intention of the writers to imply that she was on drugs, or is it just because Selena was finally getting some positive press coverage and she doesn't know how to react? I'm going to say without knowing anything, because art is subjective. I think she was doing pills. I don't know if Julie was playing it, but as a viewer, when I watched it recently, I'm like, oh, it's the pill thing. She's popping something or Gary's sneaking her pills. So that's what I'm going to say as a fan. I had the opposite reaction when I was watching it because everything had been so shitty and like coming off of the last episode of the, the data leaks and having to fire people and giant scandals for something to actually be going well. I thought it was just like the hype the hyped up version but the pattern of, that. of when selena's happy like she was happy when she walked through the glass door with mike and she's like i'll buy your boat mikey mike you yeah. old cute and she peed with the door open it's all drug related I and know. there are elements of that behavior that fit the pattern of someone on something and there definitely yeah. is a coke energy when she's That's like what what, 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 what what is this table made out, out i got to out. redo i don't my like kitchen. the knots though yeah, i don't like yeah. the knots we're not yeah. going to put the knots in that's why i was like trying to make sense of it too i was like did i miss a coke joke or something because you know they, they made such a they made such a meal of like oh, this is you know no booze here they can't you can't drink here you know yeah i'm sure so i didn't know if it was it was just one thing that just sort of like flew past. That's the thing about this show. It's like they will, they'll just drop in yeah. the information you need. If you miss it, you're screwed. It might have also been said in another scene. Like there's like the story about Heat with Al Pacino. Like his character in Heat was a cokehead, but they cut all of the references to him being a cokehead. So all they have left are scenes where he's acting like a cokehead and screaming because she's got a great ass. But it's like, and so everybody's like, oh, he's going, he's so big yeah. or whatever. And it's incredible. But they just like, he's like a coke addict. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? They just cut all. So there could very well have been a scene where she was on pills or on drugs and it or just Gary got Or Gary, can I get my things? Yeah. I, I feel like that might have been in there. Was that a very, was that right before, like leading up to it was the pill thing? I, it's been a while since it. No, the pills would have been in running, in the running episode. That was oh, a, okay. So that wouldn't have been too long. Was that it end was of earlier? Season two? Yeah, yeah. End of there, season We had two. flirted with it at oh, times, yeah. and then she yeah. was on something when they were they would keep walking it up through the glass door. Closer, probably. I think it's a trait. I think she battled with it. Uh, there was a really great moment in there, Walsh, that I love. Like whenever Mike gets like a real compliment from her. <laughs> It, like the jo joy, the I levels know. of joy oh, yeah. that yeah, yeah, Mike yeah. finds. Yeah. yeah, like and I can't even remember. Like, uh, oh God, just like your. You can go to the, the week. You got a you got a two yeah, day weekend. Two day round weekend. weekend. <laughs> Whatever she says, I'm like, oh my God, I can go to the cottage with I Wendy. Know, I love that. It's like yeah, that's not even enough time. That's enough time for you to drive up there, unpack, and then come back. Oh it's yeah. Like, like, oh yeah. No real. And it really paints it. the world they all live in. Like you don't get two day weekends. Yeah. But yeah, I I like those scenes too where. Selena is like playful and happy with Mike. Those are really fun to play. Yeah. And I think it, I don't know, like it maybe reminds me a little bit of like when you guys were coming up together. And also well, that's truly what I think or I thought in those days is like my imaginary history was all that. Like we spent a lot of time together. She was super accessible. They were very tight. So mm -hmm. it's like, oh, she's back. And it's like, mm -hmm. no, she's not. And also that thing that like Mike in a way has sometimes has like some Labrador tendencies. Yes. Where like if you even look at them a little bit, they're going to start wagging their their tail, up, yeah. you know what pick I mean? Pick up a ball. And go, yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, should we oh, do this? Oh, is it happening? <laughs> it's holy. Uh, but I do think everybody in her orbit has that need. Like, oh my God, she's looking at me. Totally. Like Gary, to the most unhealthiest yes. degree. Yeah. But I think we all, when we're in her orbit, we have a similar like. 
I'll do anything just for this moment. Yeah. 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 Summit's for access. Dan's for access. Amy's for career a little bit. But she also likes when Selena's woman to woman and they sort of have those friendly wine glasses at night mm-hmm. because yeah. that's like she has nothing else in her life. Yeah. So we all kind of jonesed for that. Too. Yeah. Uh, right after that, we go back to the uh, lectern. Bill Erickson is st- is standing in for Mike while you're on the the turn. It was it was actually Bo Webb, yeah, who was the first person to to make the distinction on set between we had this conversation last week between mm-hmm. a lectern and a podium. Oh. A podium is the thing you stand on. The lectern is the thing you stand in front of. He went to Brown. He's got he a big did. brain. Big brain on that guy. Big brain. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Bill Erickson is really kind of smug and shitty yeah. and doing it ter- hostile and aggressive. Yeah. Like being like sarcastic and e- leading even Kent to say like uh, he has no people skills I like know. a robot. Finishing sentences. And then they did that little run with he and Sue, the thing where she finished his sentence. Yes. Yeah. And, I, and the other thing I was like, oh man, that, that was a, that was one of the first times like, oh, he, the two robot people in a scene together. Well, they do get together I know, later. It's so it, perfect. It felt like it was a little like, because uh, I was watching it with the eye of like, is there a little flirtation there? Yeah. Like a little bit? Well, Kent admires Sue in a way that like, yeah. he, you could see him falling for her. Her efficiency. And Sue's like, her shot percentage is like 100. Every time she speaks, it's like gold. Oh, yeah. No, She's absolutely. She's very efficiently like, she named it, Sue Wilson is the child's, would you sign this please for my friend's child? Mm. Sue Wilson, she named her after me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that's so insane and perfect. I, uh, after that we end up, uh, oh, uh, Mike, would w- they negotiate the, the release of Leon yeah, right. for the timing and the photo op and everything? You go to get him from the hotel. Yeah. And I, there, there's a great moment in there that I liked where the guy is like, oh, is this a friend of yours? And Mike's like, oh, God, no, I hate him. He's, like, a, he's, he's a, an asshole's asshole. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. And then we turn around and Leon enters. <laughs> By the way, that's a good guy to give a shout out to. What's that actor's name? He was a great dude. Oh, yeah, he was great. Uh, oh, he played I, the Iranian I, I, liaison, perhaps, mm-hmm. for uh, that episode. Yeah. Let me look. He's a wonderful actor. But yeah, so that's like, and I think by that point, Leon and Mike sort of had some ups and downs under their belt, right? Like there was yeah. this like abusive relationship on Leon's side. And yeah, I can't believe, because you say, I think when you when he enters, like, I, I've never said this before, but I'm happy to see you. Yeah, like it's, exactly. Yeah. It implies that we've been through that. D- is that him? Navid yeah. ne- Negaban. Navid Negaban, yeah. Navi, I think yes. he's a New York guy. He was great. Yeah, he, he was, was really great. Good. He was wonderful. Um, nice dude. That's like a great example of, even with all the bozos on the show, he's like just playing like the dead on reality of mm-hmm. it. Yeah. And incredibly funny and very convincing and really good. But not, not, not like trying to hit jokes. Like he's just no. dead on playing yeah. the reality of it. He was Yeah, great. he was good. Um, and fit as F. Yeah. He seemed like a, a fitness dude. Is it fit, like what kind of... You're just all, like you he could always objectifying everyone. Every the actor every that came actor, in. That's a compliment. Like, That's a oh, compliment. so uncomfortable. Like, <laughs> when I walked... Did he squeeze I dreamed about him just, for three months. I, I, I have like, to tell you that. <laughs> you you got like great traps. Can I see those traps? Like, <laughs> no, because I had to play intimidation because I stepped in it a couple times in that scene I, w- I was always mm. thinking like oh he could really kill you yeah, and you're or, and you're in Iran yeah so yeah, it yeah. helped me to have that guy to work against yeah. you know what I mean completely yeah uh, you get told that you're going to be going on Air Force One I'm uh, to which yeah, I'm shallow enough for that to be exciting <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, I think uh, oh this is also the first moment where Mike, there's like that first little uh, bread cr- breadcrumb dropped where Leon starts to figure out that maybe he was detained an extra day. Yeah, for yeah. you over here, yeah, Mike saying something. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think I'm just like, wait, what? And you're like, oh, nothing. I'm yeah, just gonna brush basically, past Mike it. says, thank you for detaining him an extra day yeah. <laughs> in front of Leon. Something to the yeah, effect. I think he's like keeping him an extra day is like. Keep me. Yeah. Next day. What? Yeah. The I'm gonna throw this question out from the uh, subreddit because mm. um, I think it plays into these next few scenes. Because goddamn, Kevin Dunn is so funny. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Like he's all, goddamn, he's so good. When this. he's like doing this sort of like I'm so tired and like yeah, he's yeah. he's taken the Ambien and he falls asleep and they wake him up and he's groggy and yeah. he gets up so slow and like she's like Ben Ben like I uh, the question was. Uh, was there talk about giving Ben a darker backstory? Uh, oh, this is from uh, not enough, not enough room, 
not enough room. Pretty okay. good. Pretty okay, good that's handle. pretty good. Pretty good handle. I don't know if they're a fan of having not enough room. They would say they not enough room fan. Fan, if they were. If they yeah. were. Okay, yeah. you know, that's right. Uh, was there talk about giving Ben a darker backstory? In this episode, he casually mentions having his own brother murdered, murdered in 86. And in other episodes, a few people are visibly scared by the things he says as if they aren't idle threats or typical trash talk. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. I took that one as a scary line, but I, I don't believe Ben killed his brother. Like, in my no. viewership. No. I think that's just one of the things Ben... But he had you could like almost a, believe it, but I don't think he did. But he had, like, a reputation, right? Yeah. 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 Like, you know, am I being rendered? Like, no, you're being friendered. Yeah, that's And, like, one. there, it, he is making a joke about it, but he's not... Like, you're not leaving. Yeah. Like, you are being rendered. Yeah, totally. But, no, but we like you. Yeah. You know, like, he... I do like that aspect of him, like... That you, he does not fuck around with stuff like that. He also seemed like he was just, it. to me, it felt like he was just like, he was like, just don't make this more difficult than it needs to be. Just like keep it as simple as this bullshit needs to be. That always seemed like his his operating, you know, in that world was just sort of like, oh, God, it's another fucking nightmare. Okay, we just roll with it, you know. Um, and yeah. it's interesting, we were shooting, when we were shooting that, it was... So we started to shoot the first scene with the deodorant at 11.30 p.m. Oh, my God. And I think we had lunch <laughs> at 1. And so they Good were, memory. So we were really, I guess, because, I mean, I, I caught a more, I caught my flight that I didn't sleep all night and stuff. So we went all the way through the night. And then you went straight to the airport to go we back Right home. to the airport, went to my room and went to the airport. And so when we shot, we were racing, racing the hours for the final stuff with the uh, coming down the out of the airport. Our airplane and all the stuff on the tarmac. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that was that Remember was that? super late. Yeah, uh, but that was a location move because the plane was inside the stages. If I'm not mistaken. No, but the 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 interior of the plane was in the stages, but the exterior, all we had was the ladder, and they just composited in that plane. Yeah. Oh, so we were just outside the. We stages? were just out yeah. in the park. Ah. So we were just standing at the top of a ladder, like on some scaffolding, and we just like ah. walked down. fucking freezing that night. Yeah, I know that there are like, uh, like. I, I don't I want got to, be to like, go home because Tony and I were stuck in the airport. So oh, suckers, <laughs> Mike got to go home. That I night. know. Like I don't know if people like really care if actors complain about whether it's hot or cold. Yeah, but like do. I do because like a lot of other people were working in the cold, but they also got to wear clothes that were appropriate. Yeah, yeah. And we're just like in like they were like, oh no, like it's summer. I will. I always ask for long johns. If we're yeah. if it's a night, I always just say, "Can you have a pair of Listen long johns?" Listen up, actors. This, yeah. is this is good. Tip. This is a tip because I am I I am made of rice paper and mm-hmm. twigs, so I'm very skinny. And Walsh so, was commenting on that earlier. Yeah. Your body shape, your he body. Said, he, he was like, "Uh, got to get in the gym." I guess that's how I look at the world is the the body types. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's how I see the world. Yeah. But yeah, so if you're if if you want to go into this business, the only acting advice I have is ask for long johns. Yeah, That's and it. take a nap during lunch. I'll take a nap that. during lunch. Yeah. No no carbs at lunch either because that makes and you, you know tired. What? Grab yeah. a water on the way out. That's a fucking oh Reed God. Scott trick I picked up. Oh, you mean uh, into, grab snacks and a water uh, just into the night? Yeah, or yeah when you day. leave set. If even if it's an audition and there's free waters, you should take. You, should you take earned it. You yeah. earned it. Don't I, feel guilt. There, uh, you know that I think they have like battery operated or chargeable oh, yeah. heated yeah. long johns now. Yeah. So we're talking chat you know GPT. <laughs> what I saw in the last movie I did, which was cold, they basically have electric blankets that are parkas and you just go boop yep. boop and it heats section and you can go super high, medium high. Oh my God. And all the pro camera department, sound department, they're like best investment I ever got. Totally. You're like wearing an electric blanket and you're like, I'm not cold. Because they're it's so exhausting. Like you spend well, so much. Well, once you're much. cold too, you're yeah, never yeah. getting back. No. That yeah. was a big part I remember of that book, uh, A Day in the Life of Ivan Denisovich, that book that we all had to read in like eighth grade. I, did, I went the, to a shitty state school, yeah. a public school. We don't, we don't. I, I did too. Well, we weren't, com- not. we weren't communists at my school. So oh, that's we were. We did oh, we, oh, were. Okay, we okay. all shared that one oh, that's book. Right, it's me. It took every, it took like all year to read it because we just had to pass it around from one to the other. We read Daniel Boone and his adventures, I think. <laughs> uh, there was this thing at the beginning of that book where, like, they made everybody, they made all the prisoners at this, like, Siberian prison uh, strip down at the beginning of the day to make sure that they didn't have any weapons. But it was never really about a weapons check. It was just because they, once they got them cold, they never start, they never started being warm. Mm. So it was basically Torture. at the beginning of the day to make them uncomfortable and to keep them uncomfortable Ugh. for the rest mm. of the day. Heard that. Um, 
Uh, let's see. Uh, your so befriender. Where, what was the campaign that Doyle got to take over? Because Selena went to the Middle East. It's oh, uh, the was, Rainbow. Uh, the Rainbow Coalition of sports, of, of, of like professional sports. Yeah, yeah. And so I guess in our like divergent reality, there is an actually openly gay NBA player, right? Freddie something. Mm -hmm. Freddie, and he's All gonna. Star. And so they're gonna like you know have like a we're work we're partnering with the White House, and also. So what is Jonah's job at this point? Who is he working for? Working for Doyle. Okay, He's so you're in the Doyle, yeah, okay, right. and I'm the eyes and ears in the. And in Richard, the White House. your assistant, yeah. and you guys are walking to the press conference, and Richard says basketball's a religion. Well, actually, Catholicism too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, while we're there watching. Uh, watching Doyle try to understand, he'll, he has the he speech, has that, speech. The, the, which Kent, Kent, his speech that they didn't they didn't switch. Kent's over not to good him. at his job. No, Kent gave the speech. He's like, I thought it would work, but it, it's a bigger problem than I thought. Yeah, I think That's he a, he probably like he, he probably was thinking in terms of like, well, I can make those adjust those like on computer the fly. adjustments. Yeah, you know what I mean, but, but for a first time appearance for the yeah, vice yeah. president, it's the a, I was I was also rem re remarking to myself that like. It, uh, if this show was made now, like it was almost like like they we mentioned like oh well we've now added the Q but we've now right. added like a few other things since yeah. then isn't there yeah. an A and a plus? Mm -hmm. There's like thirty seven genders for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but I mean, like I was it was it even in like the the short time since this episode aired like a lot yeah. like a lot of progress made there. Yeah, I was yeah. just no I was just noting that of like yeah. oh like it was like oh kind of novel that the Q would be involved. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Totally. Yes. Um, uh, and in that scene is when Jonah overhears Kent talking about how he was polling, uh, polling Doyle uh, mm -hmm. as like or polling other candidates to see if he could be replaced. Jonah overhears that, and uh, Teddy corners him after the press yes. conference, yeah. and he and he's about to grab him, and that he just like throws it out there so he won't be touched. Like you know, he is polling other people. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that he's gonna and that Jonah's gonna like start seeding that information to reporters yeah no you're gonna start seeding that doyle wants off the ticket oh that's right that's what teddy dispatches you with and what do you think of the because that's another thing that like it's it's sexual abuse what teddy's doing to jonah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and yet it is funny is that i it is because is joe because my take is one i know tim and Patton a little bit but two Jonah comes off as such a predator and he says some of the most vile, predatory things mm -hmm. that it's almost like justice for the way he's probably acted around people. Justice for Jonah? Do you know what I mean? Like, in a way... Like a comeuppance? A like comeuppance. Yeah. There's, something, there, there's something that this show achieved in, in how heinous the characters are. They kind of crossed a line of... Like, if this was in a drama... It would it would have it would be for dramatic effect and messaging. Yes, but because it's in a comedy, it it it's more about like it amplifies just how vulnerable and you are, you know. But in a very funny way, it doesn't it doesn't feel predatory in a weird way. It feels bullyish, you know. Yeah. yeah. But it's very but the bullying is you know s sexual harassment and molestation. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I. I to answer the question of like whether they could do it now, I don't know. I think I think a show would have to build the groundwork that this show did, and just like look, these stack are stack it with deplorable people. These are the characters. This is the level. These this yeah. is the world. Yeah, and and you know, hold on. <laughs> yeah, I think there was. I remember actually there was this episode because when Doyle and uh, and uh, Teddy, they're kind of all everybody's like making. Uh, uh, inappropriate jokes about what L B G T, right. the, what it all stands for. Uh, ladies is you know Jonas yeah. like oh I'm gonna do my Lace funny yeah. riff. Yeah. La uh, and when the T comes up, Patton says like you know tucking it in or tacking it on. Yeah, and Sam and goes, uh, Richard. Richard goes, oh, it's transgender. It's transgender actually. Yeah. Yeah. I remember people. There were some people that like, or I got a few comments at the time that mm -hmm. were like, that's not you can't. Like, that. that's not, but I guess when I was looking at it, I was like, that's not really played to be a joke on transgender people. That is just a, uh, like, no, we're not just trying to tell you that Teddy's a good guy and you should right. emulate what he's saying. Like, mm -hmm. it's just another example of bad behavior. 
Yes. Yeah. It just seems, it seems like every once in a while people would take a thing li like quite literally and out of the context of the entire show and of the characters as if they were just looking like letter by letter. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's I mean, it is really tough because I think this this discussion probably happens in writing rooms all the time now. Just yeah. like, well, what is the... And it, it, just to bring it back to succession, like the same thing is like I feel like they... They will say horrible things that are funny on that show, and a lot of times they're misogynistic mm -hmm. or they're you know they're they're classist and all this kind of stuff. Um, but you kind of accept it because of the delivery system, you know. Yeah. You accept yeah, yeah, it for yeah. the world that it's in. So I, I don't know. It 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 feels lame to say like, well, then this show might not work for you. Or yeah, no, no, I don't it, think that's lame. You know, because it, it's going to do that over and over again to, to a point. You know, it's like the fact that they... Yeah, because like Romulus is always, was for a long time sexually, verbally abusive to that older woman. Like, come on, why don't mm -hmm. me and you fuck or whatever. Yeah. He's always like, yeah, that's not cool, man. No, totally. But he stuck with it and it worked on that show. And yeah. the fact that, that Veep in the final season had that just like gut punch joke about the um the the shooting numbers right yeah it? and and just that they were kind of like hovering around like well can we mention it because it would really look good for it you know yeah like they, they wanted to make use of it but they knew how evil it was and i you know i don't know like i did an improv show the other night where i shot somebody and i f felt terrible like i felt horrible for feigning a gun you know what i mean there, but it's there is always that part of me that's like if somebody gets I remember like when that school shooting joke got made or got mm -hmm. made in in I think there were a few school shooting jokes. Yeah. In, I remember like I think I talked to Tony about it one time. He's like, well, I don't really know because like what happens if there's a school shooting the week that this episode airs? Yeah. There's that part of me that was like, there's probably going to yeah. be. Well, at this point, and yeah. I got to tell you. If you're more offended that there was a character on a show that made a joke than you are about the actual school mm. shootings, then we might want to realign what our priorities about what we can stop are. Right. You know what I mean? And if and if the the purpose and like the effect of having that joke is no, look at the yeah. the people in power who genuinely yeah. probably are debating whether they can use that for like yeah. positive polling or you know yeah. That's be offended about that, but don't you know? Don't come after because it's this is an attitude that I'm trying to take into the into the future. Is exactly what you're saying of mm -hmm. like maybe something just isn't for me. Yeah, like you know what I mean. Yeah, like yeah, there yeah. are plenty of times where I hear conversations around uh, film right. and television and music where it can be like that shouldn't exist in that movie. And there's that part of me that's like, well, then maybe it just isn't for you. That rarely comes up, like. They're like, oh, this exists in this movie. Therefore, all of the people involved in that movie are garbage. Are garbage, yeah, or or that is what they believe, or that is who they are. And there is that part of me that's like, I hope this person never finds out about horror movies. Yeah, because they're gonna be like, oh my god, they are letting murderers make movies. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And that's yeah. like, I maybe it just might not be for you. That's something. I mean, I, I you and I have talked about this, but it's just like with. Uh, communicating to my daughter who's 16 now and and is kind of getting out of this space but for a long time she was like oh that's a bad person he's a bad person she's a bad yeah, person yeah. based on the precedent of one thing or the association in something yeah um and i was like and i you know it's like well maybe take away the person from the the art that they're a part of and then if you have a problem with that just don't take part in the art yeah. but it's it I, th I, I get scared that we're getting to a point where in in trying to be sort of even if you're trying to be liberal you're 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 closing off so much that you only are reinforcing they your cover own that ideas. In tar. there's a, a beautiful monologue she has in, and she's basically saying you've siloed yourself mm -hmm. if, the, if if every creepy you know, Beethoven or Mozart is someone that you won't give listen to, then you're going to silo yourself off to some great, to, to very, a small amount of art. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Like the, the judgment can only spread so long, but, yeah. or, or it's just not for you. Like that's fine too, but it doesn't damn everything about it. And then the other I, the kind of lofty argument, argument is just that like, well, the person 
and the art aren't necessarily the same thing, you know, like let art, if somebody creates something great and it's out there, a thousand interpretations of what it is. But if you hold, if it's beholden to the maker, then it's not about the art. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so take that. I think we fixed it. Yeah. Yeah. This Long time. Cool. Thank you, Brian. It. You really, set to, you really, I mean, really I, helped I came fix in it. today thinking we were just going to talk about the episode and look at us. We solved oh, it. Man. Guys, the writer's strike just ended because they all heard what really? Brian said. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Netflix came around. Um, I think next, is it Dan still unemployed? Do we visit? No, no, no. no. He, yeah, no, he's going into Sydney Purcell's office. Who, God damn. Yeah, I've Peter said Gross. this many times. So he's so good. God, I love Sydney. I love yeah. Pete Groats. Yeah. In this show. yeah. That's a great part just the yeah the, the parts i want honestly i will say this i wanted i got sad that leon got less assholey over the seasons yeah uh, i i felt i had less to play with like yeah. i was really jealous of, of dan back at all and stuff <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he's like these juicy buffets of just like the shit to say and like and, and sydney Purcell, like ray is like i don't know you want to fuck that girl not her yeah, am yeah. i kidding i'm not i don't no, know I'm am i yeah, am yeah. i or this is yeah, gonna I'm, keep going he's yeah. just he's a fucking it. menace and yeah. this thing about like hey we just started we just started working with glass a cherries so try to get glass a cherries in there yeah yeah, yeah. and it's like oh if we'll i don't i'm gonna get fired like yeah. figure it the fuck out yeah yeah um so love love it when he comes back uh Oh, uh, there's Black Hawk Down. Uh, I have this note. Black Hawk Down with Laurel and Hardy. That's a great joke. Mm -hmm. that By is the way, did you have... Am I crazy? You didn't... Never mind. I'm crazy. Move on. Okay. It's a different well, thing. There, There is a thing that happens in this that relates to one of the questions we got on the Second in Command subreddit. Hmm. Um, Leon's mom was a unique character kind of out of nowhere. I feel like she was a big standout in that episode. Was her presence always a one-off or, or were there any ever... Were there ever any plans to bring her back? Huge fan. Had to get a question in. Uh, looking forward to the podcast coming back. Okay, well, that wasn't part of the question. I probably should have left that out, but it was kind of nice. It's to, nice to you give you know, a back. We are empty vessels yeah, waiting yeah, yeah. to be filled <laughs> There's with that uh, little bit of American with candy compliments. They just yeah. Gave you. yeah. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> um, she never came back. She no. never came back. I do think that this... And Jonah said she kind of looks terrible. Yeah, yeah. She's, yeah. Like, <laughs> she's, she's like, she's like terrible. Looks, I was confused. I was confused by her. Like I didn't know that she was my mother, and she was in the in the um, uh, makeup trailer. Yeah, and I just I literally thought like, is there a heavy metal story? Like is yeah. she like she looked like a goth, a middle aged yeah. goth, yeah, lady. like a middle aged goth lady, or like maybe even like you know fifties. I mean like fifties, yeah. sixties, like mm -hmm. you know sort of grandmotherly. Yeah, uh, like goth lady, but like. I do remember, I think that they just, uh, there was a, a woman who worked uh, in marketing at HBO named Nancy, who everybody loves, and I just saw recently. Nancy Lesser? Yeah, Nancy yeah, Lesser. She's who great. Is, just is incredible and was, uh, was all, like, but has like a very distinct look. Oh, yeah. And is like sort of beautiful and statuesque, but is very like always wearing a black dress, yeah. always has like very oh, uh, like jet black hair yeah. standing up. That's cool. Uh, and I think they based the look off her, and I don't think they based it off anything other than it would be funny if this character was dressed like that, mm -hmm. and it would be funny if that character was Leon's mom, and we never explained it. Yeah. And I think that's why that joke was there. It yeah. was just simply, it was funny. Yeah, and we, yeah. Had, no, we had no interaction. No. no. Like, no. It was just us standing either side of Julia. And so yeah, it, so I want to cover a couple things. One, yeah. obviously, the parallel to this whole episode is the Reagan administration held off, negotiated behind Carter's back, mm -hmm. right, to get the hostages released after he was elected. Even though Carter did all the work and had the deal done, yeah, they botched it and pushed it back. And so I just want to throw that out there because I like when whatever. That's, that's also, I didn't uh, know that. Yeah, uh, that's true. Nixon and didn't Nixon and Kissinger work behind the scenes to keep the Vietnam War going? Because there was like there was yeah. gonna be a deal in place to to end it, but Nixon oh before would be like, election or something before yes. the election, yeah, Nixon would be that. like that I would be Nixon. terrible for me. And so he like went around and was like, hey, just so you know, like I'll get you a better deal or whatever. Just like don't take this so that I can win. Yeah, turns out I was just reading this on the internet. He's not a good. Person. Not what was not a good guy. Huh. Oh, <laughs> but wait, he has a he has a library. He has that? a decent library. I'm not a, saying anything about it. He does. It, have it, sometimes you, you got to separate the library. You got to separate yeah. the library from oh, the man. Oh yeah, yeah. Maybe that library is not for me. Yeah, there maybe that library is just that. not for you. That's what it is. Uh, 
this also Leon West's that that scene, like Leon's mom, that all leads into like one of the one of my favorite scenes that I ever got to be in was the one in the limousine where he finally yes. where Jonah <laughs> finally reveals that he is being molested. Yes. Because Bill Erickson and Kent call you because they think you've do- leaked yeah. Doyle's or they know that Doyle's talking about getting off the ticket. Yes. And so they're and like you they are calling as- me like what the fuck is going on? Yeah. What is happening over there? And he and I interpret that as, well, they must be asking me about the one thing <laughs> yeah, that has yeah, yeah, taken yeah. over my life. And then they're like, what? What are you saying? And about? so the and so uh it has like so like there's that initial misunderstanding. Like as a comedy scene, there are so many yeah. things that I like about it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The initial misunderstanding, and then you have it's just like it's uh it's Kent and Bill Erickson. And then Catherine, Catherine comes her in, engagement. and yeah. then Sue is at the very to have end, been there. Sue, and I'm here taking notes. And then you're also in the limo, like just trying two feet away from them, not even, they, like just <laughs> still still mouth. Yeah, out Richard's to them. sitting next to Leon's mom, yeah, yeah. and you're across, and yeah. I'm across, and I'm trying. I like there's no way that they're not gonna hear it. Yeah. But I, but I still tried, but still trying to hide it, and yeah. then like tr- giving the the details of like he patted them, and one time he cupped them, and mm-hmm. one time he held them for a very long time. Yeah. The reveals of all the people listening in, like I, I was watching it at home yesterday, and Annie was upstairs and just like overheard the and and Sue here taking notes, and she laughed from oh, upstairs. But this was a scene that I remember having like n- again, not a fight. But a like a, a a spirited conversation with Addison, because this scene was originally supposed to take place on uh, Leon West Mom's doorstep, mm. and when we were in rehearsals, they were like, "Okay, well, they have to be able to overhear this." And I was like, "Guys, like, I there you would is, walk away. You, I would walk away." And yeah. they were like, "Well, no, no, no. Like, it's you know, it's this. They just have to overhear it. So just go over here." And I'm like, "Guys, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, there is no way." that he would allow them to overhear it. He would walk to the end of the driveway. But like, I basically like argued it into this has to be a space that he cannot leave. I think that's so smart because that drives me crazy either in shooting or watching something because especially in comedy where you're just like, no, 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 no. It, it's, it needs to be supported by, by a reality. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. so there are all these scenes like, I mean, that would be like on a, a Disney show or something where they're yeah. like, I'm going to stand over here behind this yeah. bush. Yeah. You know, and so it, putting it in that in that that, restri- that situation. Yeah, oftentimes in Veep, for example, the most you say the most ridiculous thing that gets misinterpreted. Like, I remember, like, how are we going to do this? Like, Dan thinks she said CBS, but it's really CV. My sister CBS, works at yeah. CVS. And as an actor, like your moment on the porch, it's like, Jesus, we really got to make sure this isn't phony baloney yeah because it'll suck otherwise yeah and so they give you these challenges so for you actors listening take a nap bring your long johns (laughs) no carbs at lunch and and push back if you don't think you can deliver something believably in any particular setting or in any any particular phrasing and sometimes i i will say that like i think the pushback wasn't necessarily like no the the pushback was not pushback but it's like giving your opinion in a way that's like trust me on this yeah yeah or no i mean the pushback that i was getting from at i think it was more just like production based of like oh yeah yeah i mean like sometimes it's just like well this is the location we have or like we just have to do it here yeah. and the only reason we have to do it here is because it'll cost us hundred and fifty thousand dollars to change it yeah and i get what you're saying but it that moment you're talking about is not worth hundred and fifty thousand. did you film it on the porch no we didn't i i, I we, because if we had shown up yeah and it was on the porch i don't know what we would have done but this so you this called comp- it before in in rehearsals rehearsal. okay. of this episode oh, that's good it I was like guys like there's no way he would say this anywhere close to any because i was trying to like build it up like yeah. this was really affecting him but over- we were also in the history of that show were invited to that process yes we were yeah. contributors yeah. in every way and they wanted that input yeah like, it was a very and i think that yeah. i mean i'll say it again i do think that that is why that this show is so amazing because because they iron out so many it could, when they have that that many balls in the air when you iron it out just make sure it's like well it's going to change on the day but let's make sure it's like as solid as we can get it yeah. especially for the joke like if it's for, in support of the joke 
they that always felt like it was like yeah what, yeah what, i wasn't gonna... uh, yeah i like wasn't asking them to change that all around because i thought i looked better in a limousine yeah i, I want to do a limo scene i just kind of wanted to be like you know like can we just do a walk and can talk we do a or... humvee i yeah. know it's kind of going off but you know so I think is the next scene Leon comes back on the plane and S Selena hugs you too long mm -hmm. for the photo op. Yeah, and then and she's milking it, and then I smell bad, and and, and like and all you want is food, food. and of course food. you're never gonna get food. That's another like pat on the back to the writers. Like they're always layering in these games. Like yeah. you, you were never gonna get food, never gonna get food, it never get. It just kind of kept passing yeah, it, by. Yeah, it, it would get brought up. We have granola bars, great, anything. Yeah, yeah. Never brought Nothing it. with chickpeas, I think Leon says. Yeah, yeah. As long as it doesn't have chickpeas. And in is that the scene where you and Selena ultimately, or where you and Ben ultimately sit down and you start putting it together? Or, or that's I think it's later. That's okay. Later, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I, I, it was just, I'm trying to think back on when she said, like, she's she's she can't be this dumb. It might have been stuff leading up to it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. But it felt like just when we were running and stuff, that there was stuff that... I think there was much more in the moment where she was kind of like, oh boy, oh geez. And she's like, she's not going to, she's going to ace out of this and pass the buck. Yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. Or Leon's going to deliver it to Mike or Ben and not yeah, to yeah. the face of the president. And I think, and that, that is a good point. That's yeah. the other thing is like, she's like, at this point, he, like I would go, I would do that to the vice president. Yeah. You know, because that's the message. Like everybody, it's just who cares? But the president, he couldn't sort of. I'm toe to toe with her. I'm smiling because <clears throat> I'm remembering that I think that scene takes place on the plane after you guys have taken off, but Mike and Gary have left to go talk. No, we to haven't taken off yet because she knows Leon says some things that imply he's sniffing around the fact that I know I was detained an extra day, and I also mm -hmm. know that the original reason I was detained might have something to do with you. And she's like, We got to go now. And Leon threatens to go to the press. Maybe I should tell the press plane this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then she makes the decision. And, and Gary or Ben says, but Gary and Mike are not. On the she's like, fuck it. They'll get a ride yeah, home. She, they're, they're like, yeah, yeah. Gary and Mike are on the plane. Ran. And she's like, well, is the pilot on the plane? Yeah. <laughs> like, you just, <laughs> how far you've fallen from that first totally. moment of hugging. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, oh, uh, so that means you guys have to try to, uh, you have to try to bribe your way onto the press plane. Not yet. I think there's a well. Maybe well, you get, there's an intermediate scene where he placates. It's going to be a little longer, and they throw peanuts at him, and yeah. then he goes out to make sure. No, you guys find out that there is. So you go to the to the press plane. You you placate them. They throw peanuts yeah. at you. That's before my stuff, I think. Mm -hmm. But and then yeah. you are you are in the airport, and you see the plane take off. And you're like, what the hell? And then you find out from Sue that there's a backup plane. That's yeah. right. right. Okay. And I think there is, the, I just there, I just remember there was that moment of like, uh, 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 there you have all the booze and you're like, we have booze and they have a crippling dependency. I just yeah. liked that moment. Yeah. Oh, that yeah, was a really fun. Yeah. You're trying to bar bribe your way onto their plane. Yeah. Um, what happened? Did they, was there, wasn't there a whole thing because our friend Jessica Chaffin was on that. They shot some scenes with the press people, and I remember just oh, like, in that plane, she was a character, and she was really excited, and then that scene got cut. I, I um, mean, I remember that plane, like honestly, like the. I remember Steph Lang at one point was like, "Planes are so expensive to build. Planes yeah. are so expensive to build. Now we have to have two completely different fucking planes." <laughs> and so, of course, the press plane, which was such a hassle and cost so much money, ends up being in this thing for like two seconds, and all those scenes get cut. Yeah. Um, That's why you can't make a lot of veeps. They cost a lot of money. <laughs> they cost Thank a lot you, of money. HBO. And yeah, also, one of the That's guys. That's why you pivot to a show like Succession that has like a low budget. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Production value is garbage. You know what? <laughs> I wonder if our budget was more than Succession. I'll say <laughs> yeah, that. Because yeah. we had a lot of redos. That's we did. true. Um, That's true. But the guy, one of the guys, one of the reporters on the plane who said a line or two mm -hmm. was from the baseball episode, just to say that. And I, oh, I oh, wish nice. I remember well, his name. But he was, was he a Baltimore there. local? Yeah. I feel like, yeah. I feel yeah. Like he, was. he got to do something. Oh, was he the he guy? He was with Cat. I, I don't Is know. he the guy that we saw like a bunch? He would be back and he, there, I can't remember his name. I'll get yeah, it. Yeah, we'll get it. Um, Shout out to that dude. He was uh, The Chinese can, when you find out the plane is not going to be leaving for three days, the Chinese uh, can, pit, can 3D print 100 houses in that time. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, uh, it, Amy and Dan have gone on 
uh, have gone on TV right. to, you know, to argue against one another. Uh, Dan brings up glass A cherries. They're having a drink uh, at a place called the Warp Inn. Oh, is- I just want to say, Gary was tasked with calming Leon down once the secret was starting to bubble, and she tells Gary, I don't know, just give him a hand job if you have to. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to give a shout out to that one. Gary's like, okay, mm-hmm, okay, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, this is from Baltic Korean, uh, so I think that is a Baltimore or a Baltic Korean. Baltic Korean. So not, like, a, yeah, a Baltimorean who I'm assuming is Korean, not a Baltic area Korean. No, it a, a, a Baltic a Baltimorean, a Baltimorean. Okay, Baltimorean. Bal- Baltimorean. Baltimorean. I don't know who is also Korean. Yes, uh, just brought up. Uh, that that scene with Damien and Dan was shot at the Wharf Rat mm. in, oh. uh, in as, Fells Point. Yeah, in Fells Point. Good yeah. dive, good yeah. dive bar. I think it was really close to the uh, to the Homewood Suites, so I yeah. think we actually went there quite a oh, bit. Man. I love um, going to Baltimore. Uh, when uh, Gary, when we called Sue to fix, because that's another like tiny thread. So now Sue's mm-hmm. our lifeline. Meanwhile, like yeah, there's all these other threads being unfurled. Uh, Sue says to Gary, "Man up or." Or lady down a little. Or at least yeah, lady, lady down, down a little. little. Yeah. Uh, there's also the code that they're asked to speak in when uh, uh, about the like, you know, guys, we should be speaking in code. Oh, that's and right. I f- uh, uh, <laughs> we were targeting happy parents about stealing cupcakes yes. for their dead children. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, wait, no, okay, wait. This is this is the earlier. I totally forgot that this. I mean, they're making use of that same subject matter we were talking about shooting the shooting like victims right oh, no, this, bereaved no, this parents is, this is uh the kids who died of aids perhaps no 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 there no? was a kid a data breach revealed a the true the real identity of a kid who had was hiv positive but oh, okay. separately Sorry. the same illegal data that they had they they sent a targeted mailer about family for the family's first bill and uh, and pictures like pictures of kids to recently bereaved parents. Oh right. So right. that's what parents that is. who lost a child from yeah. any cause from yeah. any oh, cause. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh my God. But so it was the use of that illegal information <laughs> is why they were uh, targeting happy parents about stealing cupcakes. So this is dead. Erickson and Kent telling Selena that Bill had the idea to bring Doyle in on that information. Yes, so that he's he's dirty by it too. He's so dirty. He's dirty, yeah, which is kind of genius. It's a great idea. Totally. Yeah. Uh, Bill might actually be really good at his job. He is. Uh, but he's not a good press sec, but he's a good upper comms guy yeah. or advisor. Um, so uh, th- this also brings up... So, uh, and that's where the Black Hawk down with Laurel and Hardy came up somewhere yeah. around there. Mm-hmm. Okay. So uh, Selena is going to bring on Karen Collins. Uh, she tells Ben, she's like, look, this is not about you. It's just an old friend. She's going to be a special advisor. Ben I think Ben is so <laughs> tired. He does not care. Uh, he... Uh, uh, that's uh, Lennon Parham. Yep. Uh, long the time. The introduction of Lennon, yeah. Yeah. Another thread. Like, that's a lot. I In this episode, so Lennon has gone on. She now plays the ex-wife of one of my characters on Bob's Burgers. I do a voice for. Oh. And then uh, Peter Gross and I used to do the same commercial campaign for Sonic. Sonic. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then... Um, it's all, about, uh, it's all about you, Brian. It is. Jeepers. I, I, I was Jeepers. very excited. I kept watching. I was like, holy shit, all these all people. All these connections. Go ahead. You had another connection. Then another one is uh, Bill Purcell. Um, uh, uh, I'm blanking. Bill uh, Erickson, Dietrich Bader. D- Dietrich Bader. Uh, just uh, Lucky Hank. He's on that. I've worked with him recently. Ah. I got to hang out with him. It was and, so good. And then, here's the glossy cherry on it. I was at the <laughs> same uh, bat, bat mitzvah with uh, um, uh, Pat Oswalt recently. Pat Oswalt was getting bat mitzvah. No, was he, it Walters? I was at the same one. Yeah, was, was it Walters? Walters? Yeah. Okay. So I you, guess I was there. You were too, there, but you don't hear me name. If you want to claim it, if you want to claim it, I drove by uh, Stallone's house two years ago. And then my friend uh, Jess Chaffin was cut out of this. That episode. is true because I remember uh, talking to her on the plane. Uh, I was, she was excited bomb. she was there. I know. Yeah, yeah. I uh, one time when I was at the uh, the the like the uh, that mall that's in the. In Century City, mm-hmm. at the Avenue of the Americans, yeah. um, one time uh, Josh Brolin was behind me in line to get to pay for his parking. That's better than anything I've said on this podcast. Honestly, this it was point. pretty fucking great. <laughs> um, Where so, does Selena say this line? I, f- I, I, sh- I have my finger on the button, but I feel like I'm just operating in a closet that no, uh, a light in a closet that I'll never see. I think I, 
I think it's before she sits Ben down. I think it's like somewhere in there of like, yeah. it's out of control. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. we are not on top of it. And that's why I'm bringing in Karen Collins. Yeah. And also earlier, I think Amy speaks to that too. It's like, it feels like no, like the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing. And right. the mutant third hand is punching me in the tits. And uh, like, I feel because like I'm once on again, Amy's out of the loop. Amy's yeah. out of the loop. I feel like I'm on life support and they keep unplugging me to charge their phones yeah that, like, and that, she also has the scene with dan at the wharf rat where she thinks she thinks he's, he's gonna her. jump in bed with her again yeah, yeah she plays that so it's so good and i think he's kind of oblivious at first and then he, he doesn't poke it he just yeah, lets yeah. it go but he's so shameless um that was good to see that come back. Yeah. There is there was a question i think it was i don't think it was in the subreddit but about how like karen's uh, about how Karen's attitude of like sort of playing both sides at all times kind of isn't is present, that, is not in not this last yet. scene. Didn't seem like Her it. specialty is common sense. It is like a different game for that character. She comes in all confident yeah. Yeah. and bubbly, and you, you almost believe she could be com yeah. competent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And and of course, like both uh, Erickson and Kent, like oh, I knew, and Amy's yeah, like, oh, I knew she was coming. Everybody like, has to everybody pretend yeah, yeah. that yeah. they knew it was happening. Eat shit. But it is funny because, like in the in the densest of episodes, Karen's not even playing her full Karen game yet. Yeah. So it's just like it's kind of slow playing in a wonderful way. Like she's not coming out full on. Well, we could do this or we could do that. It's like, no, we're just gonna like have it be really uncomfortable for Amy and the rest of the crew and slowly get her ingratiated. Do you think that they had not had that game yet? There is very much a possibility. Well, that is that totally just, possible. Yeah. That they just didn't have the next episode written and they hadn't rehearsed with her a lot. There is definitely a chance yeah. that, it, that that was the case. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, though that also has, <laughs> yeah, there's like a great moment in there when, when, uh, uh, Catherine's like, I'm engaged, and she just says, "No, no you're, you're not. not. I'm you're 48. I'm 48. 48. Like, and it's just like, oh, the it's the subtext just being like, if you're gonna get married, that makes me older, yeah, yeah. and that's not okay. So yeah. Uh, oh, there was also there was a runner that we threw in about the about whenever anybody brought up Teddy, uh, that I would do like uh, they would be like, hey, oh, what's up with Teddy? I'd be like, hmm. Yeah. Like uh, every time, because he just didn't want to process. So like, do they know? Uh, uh, like, you know, what are, what are, what are they asking about? Uh, and so when Leon West is off the plane, there's a you moment. Say to Amy? It, no, to uh, Catherine. Oh, yeah, uh, hey, right. Catherine, earlier about the molesting, and she's like, like what? what? And he's like, he's like, hmm? <laughs> like it's just the that last so little funny. button. So funny. That just was the so last funny. button on that. I feel like in the credit rolls for this season, they might have been some of our longest. I find credit rolls very satisfying because mm -hmm. uh, yeah. they don't forward plot mm -hmm. really. They sort of revisit what games we've set in motion or characters. There's so, psychologically, I'd like to understand why I find them so appealing. Well, I, they're just they feel they're like a, soothing. They feel like, they feel like a bonus scene. They, and it, I guess, but they go so, like we'll have to do this. I'll do some homework because I feel like this season well, has. You're some, not going to do that homework. <laughs> I'll ask the fans. Get on okay. Facebook first. <laughs> I'll ask. The, I know. Good luck. <laughs> They feel longer and more satisfying, maybe because we're diving back into the show, possibly. So it could be the recency effect. But I also feel like, I don't know, I feel, I, I feel like season four had a lot of long, great credit rolls, or I, the way they use them. Did they I, just not want to kill their babies, in a way? Or they just... Well, that's or, or, true, too. The edit was always, you know, up in arms. It could have been a 40-minute first cut, and then they had to get it to yeah. 32, but they found a way to get it in the credit roll. Like, that's always possible, too. I always just found that it was like, that I always liked the credit rolls, that because it, it just felt like... It was all going to continue on. This thing that I liked so much, uh, or mm. that you liked watching yeah. so much, is going to continue it's on. It's not over. It's not over That's for what them. It is. They're going to keep going until you see them next week. And also, yeah. it was the opportunity to just not really see a plot thing. It was like yeah. a lot of times it's just like a little character mm -hmm. thing. You're like, yeah. you, you're, you're a credit roll of sitting in front of the thing. Uh, candy machine. The candy machine. Wendy. Yeah, yeah. And you like you like lie about eating candy. Like there's no plot relevance to that. It's yeah. just like a great Mike character moment. Yeah. I think that might have been one of the ones we punted a month later or something like that. Or they they decided like oh we wanted to do one more thing with Mike and so that 
Oh, you, I feel like that candy machine thing might have come later. Oh, that, wow. that was my sense. Was there a lot of that kind of like just little connect or just like little tissue things that you needed? Well, one thing well, there we, was always there was just, always scenes that got punted, like the phone booth scene or whatever. Like it's like, oh, this we owe this from two hundred four. Right. Yeah. And we're shooting two ten. You so were we shooting two ten, and it's like, oh god, okay. Well, we had to put a phone booth out on this street, and we're just yeah. going to composite in some buildings behind it because we just don't. We uh, we're leaving. We're flying out of yeah, Baltimore yeah. tomorrow, so we just have to film it. Or. If it's an early enough episode and they're piecing a show together, like this one might have been a result of that. Is like they realize, like, oh, we could use Mike in the credit roll. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they might have come up with it, you know, while they were piecing the episode together. Possibly. Yeah. I don't, I don't know for sure. But I haven't watched episode five yet, but there's also a moment where she says, did my eye just twitch about something? And I, I think that oh, yeah. sets up the eye twitch joke in the next episode yeah, or maybe I, later on. I remember seeing that and I was like, I don't remember because I remember that episode and I was like, I Has the eye twitch that. happened in any of the episodes didn't it happen in no there's a in debate it happened in debate we've Did seen it? debate already yeah here's the thing we're doing like we like <laughs> we're the, jumping around we're but jumping around the eye twitch is something we've seen from selena that's right as as a a signifier that stress is mounting because mm -hmm. i think it came up during the debates yeah yeah, yeah. one of her debates if you remember that so funny I, I real fast i went when you guys are talking about just like getting the extra stuff in the 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 credit roll i i don't i want people to understand like how long these scripts are and how much they get into 32 minutes yeah and, yeah and not not tons is thrown away it didn't feel like you no. know you know they just it, the press plane really just the press plane yeah there are definitely whole scenes that went away but it it i it i was always like god this script like they made like 60 pages you know yeah. and it's just it flies yeah the fly and i think that it, it's even a lessening of pace that we probably find satisfying. It's like, I don't have to pay attention to credit rolls because they're pretty yeah. simple and straight up. Like your exchange with Catherine was so, br you were so funny in that. It was so brilliantly simple and just perfectly understated. And I think a lot of the stuff in those credit rolls as a viewer, mm. they're pretty easy to get. You don't have to pay attention. Like, wait, what's happening? It's not, yeah. it's not plot. There's no yeah, unfolding. Yeah, yeah. And I also think like, because I love the moment of Zen on The Daily Show, and I love the end yeah. of CBS Sunday Morning where they just show, like, deer at Yellowstone <laughs> Park <laughs> licking water off an icicle. And I'm like, this is all television. It's like Teletubbies. It's like, oh, television yeah. should be just like this. Yeah, it just, it like, it's just the purest form of, like, just calm escape. Yeah. Like, just, like, just put me in a good moment. But I think the promise of these characters, it's not the end of the show. I think yeah. that's what's strong, strong, resounds mm -hmm. with me strongest. It's like, oh, it's not the end of the show. They're gonna come back next week. These characters are gonna yeah. live on. Because yeah. so there is something like when you watch a great show and you're like, oh, it's fucking over and I gotta wait a week. It's like, no, they're gonna live on. You're gonna yeah. be okay. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Succession has that. It's a 15 minute talk afterwards. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh god damn, fucking hate it. Uh, this this entire episode like a like a cartoon dog replacing our heads with like a like a turkey leg. Like you know how like a dog gets hungry and like, <laughs> yeah, Brian has just been like replacing us with like Jesse Armstrong <laughs> and totally. uh, yeah, and, and Tony uh, Roach. Brian Cox. Well, yeah, right. Yeah, Brian Cox over there. Way. Uh I, so I think we're at the point. That's the end of that episode. Uh, first, we forgot to do this. But hold on. Anything that you felt like we didn't give you room to express or any any, any little... I listed all the, all the tertiary life connections, mm -hmm. Bo, all the way down You're a big to deal in show business. Big deal in You've show established business. Name that. dropped several projects I've done. Yeah, you're really busy. Um, Congratulations. Thanks so much. My body's in good shape, uh -huh. so yeah. that's cool for Walsh. You're a mesomorph and a morph or ectomorph. Yeah. I can't remember. I don't think so. I mean, I think for me, the, the, that, the rewriting and, and shooting on the fly scene was one of the most exciting, and it sounds dumb but it really was just like oh my god it kind of was like yeah. i was like oh this is this is what i love like, well uh, it's it's also you know we talk about how fortunate we are to be on the show and everyone who came in is so funny but people were in it to win it on that show like yeah they yeah. really cared about comedy in the best way like if you're going to be obsessed about something be obsessed about comedy yeah like and it's so gratifying to see like that hard work happening during lunch. Totally. Mm -hmm. And like people want it to be great. And it's as people who like comedy, I love that. Like I, I hate being around something. Ah, fuck it. Whatever. Yeah. It's like being around people who really want it to be really good. Yeah. And that's I just, what I get from that too. Yeah. And it felt like at that point I sort of felt like, okay, yeah, I, I, I'm part of this, you know, because as, as a recurring or a guest star, sometimes you're like, eh, hey, what, what have you guys been doing for the past couple of years? But 
Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, you came in season one, episode two. This is season four, episode four. Like, yeah, by this, like, you're a part of this. You've yeah. Been, I remember you brought episode. Isla to one rehearsal. You had to bring That's Isla right. out yeah. That's to right. the bus station rehearsals. That's right. And that was the one where they sent everybody home. Like, they wrote, they had to rewrite the entire script, right? <gasps> yeah. You're kidding me. Yeah. Do you remember what that episode that was? was? Tim's good with this. That was uh, a Morris... Yeah, that, that would have been uh, the one where Jonah's, uh, uh, the one... That's where I call you the dick that keeps on giving. Yes, it's the one... Uh, uh, Catherine's birthday party? No, it's the one where they're trying to, they have like the heroic gay, uh, heroic gay taxi driver. Oh, it's her launch for it's campaign. It's the launch, the yeah. Uh, launch. Alicia, Alicia. Right. So Wait. we read that and then said, everyone go home? Yeah. Yeah. That was the one we talked about it in that at, in that episode how it was like we did the table read on a Sunday and they were like we're going to rehearse. Is that the only time that happened or no? That I feel like we did that in New that York. Was the, that was the only time that it was like you're going home for two weeks. Okay. Yeah. We, we did it where it was like hey you thought we were shooting tomorrow and we aren't. But okay. this was everybody go back to your houses. Yeah. Because okay. we were going to figure this out. And, I, and my daughter said, when she was she was sitting on the other side of this, we had this big conference room. She's sitting on the other she side. Had the room. IPad, she, so she had her iPad. She had her iPad. She was watching shows on her yeah. little blanket. And then she got up and she walked to me and she's like, when are you guys going to start working? And I was like, oh, we have been working. And she's like, no, you guys are just like. Bah, 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 bah. I have a friend <laughs> whose dad is, uh, uh, whose dad is a first generation uh, Irish immigrant mm -hmm. and he had, like moved his family to Brooklyn you know to provide a better life for them to send them to college you know what I mean he was a he was a carpenter in Brooklyn and my friend uh, Damien is now like an oceanographer and works with climate change and like he went to college oh good. and at one point when he was in college his dad can came he in. tell a dick joke huh <laughs> he can't tell dick jokes like us though can he no okay no right. so he's kind of, of doing great but not super great not, Go ahead. Do, not doing as good as us yeah um so he was telling me the story that his dad came up and like he and like his lab partner were like trying to finish like this giant paper and uh, the dad comes in is just just chatting him up and uh, and the mom comes up and he and, and she's like, what are you doing? Like they're, they're trying to they're got they've got to work. And he just goes, well, you wouldn't exactly call it heavy work now, would you? <laughs> like <laughs> and he was like, dad, you you sacrificed everything for us to be able to do this. And now you're dunking on us <laughs> for because for, it doesn't look enough like work. I thought you were rolling whales over on their side with your hands. <laughs> idiot. That makes me think of somebody in Chicago told me they would bring their girlfriend to improv parties. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's like, I don't want to go. He's like, why? She's like, because all you do is they just stand around and lie to each other. <laughs> <laughs> like she called doing bits. Oh, my God. Lying to I each other. That. Like as an outsider. Please don't hold up the mirror that clearly. <laughs> I, we do a thing where we do walkbacks and yep. double downs as a, as a politician would. Like, do you want to uh, walk anything back or do you want to double down on anything? I'm going to double down on my name dropping wow. because... Oh my God, another connection? Why? Because Al Pacino told you that dub doubling down was great? Well, let me just double down because it's the perfect segue to mention that on this episode is when I found out that Julia Louis-Dreyfus was following me on Twitter and oh. had listened to a podcast I had done. Wow. So that... Was that was actually probably the biggest moment of doing that shoot. Honestly, <laughs> I, I was like, "You listen to that podcast?" She's like, "I like comedy." I was like, "You don't understand. You don't get it, but you get it. But you don't get it." You, it, it, oh. it that was like a moment, and that did kind of blow blow my mind. That that was the moment I was like, "Oh, you're fucking really cool, <laughs> awesome." You know what I mean? And then I also want to roll that back because. Uh, Walsh made me feel bad about yeah, it. Yeah. About what? Don't, don't. About name Walsh. dropping? I'm just saying. You're that a big Walsh deal. The, That's I'm my own saying, insecurity. I'm just saying these are all people in my life and it was cool they're on this show. Yeah. That's all. It is. Uh, Walsh, you got any walkbacks, double downs? Uh, what did I want to talk about, Tim? Um, I don't think I have any walkbacks, actually. I had a line I was going to pull out, but I can't find it now. It was a good one. It was a joke that we forgot to highlight. But go ahead with yours and I'll... Um, I don't think... Uh, I mean, I guess... You know what? I'll double down on... Uh, I'll double down on maybe the something story, just isn't... Fair after right. Jonah did the call... Mm -hmm. And they hang up. Erickson goes, we didn't get anything out of that, but a good story. Yeah, I was, was going to mention that one, too. I forgot so that So it's like another level to that scene. Like, that is so greedy. 
They packed so many yeah. different funny. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that. I remember that was, that was the part of that scene that like sealed well, it. I didn't for get anything yeah. about that, but a funny story. Like, yeah. like that scene has one million different funny things happening in yeah. it. Yeah. And then he manages to find like an unbelievable button that caps it. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Uh, that was like another densely packed addition to an already densely packed wonderfully yeah. I'm going to throw this scene. out there and I'm just going to let the audience discuss it Ooh. because it was something that I was going to bring up earlier that I was thinking about Jonah at the time when it came to like sexual assault and like the comeuppance thing that you mm -hmm. were talking about mm -hmm. that there is a representation there I think of an imperfect victim and I think that mm -hmm. was like I think that is something that we do need to consider and talk about is that a lot of times people who are victims of uh, of sexual harassment anything that they've done in their past can make them an imperfect victim and therefore they were not a victim you know what i mean yeah and so i thought that like yeah like it sucks that it's happening to him and it's kind of funny that it is but also he is like an imperfect victim yeah, anyway, yeah. Let, i'm just gonna let the audience talk i about also that. think too when teddy grabs you in this episode and he walks away your reaction was like, God darn it. You had like a reaction that wasn't like horror. You're just like, Jesus, I'm sick Well, when he shit. does it in this yeah. one, I think it was, I've avoided it. Yeah. I, I, I threw out that information so that I could distract him. He wouldn't touch me. But he found a different way. I let my guard down for a second. He found a different way to do it. And it was like, I, it was like frustration. It was like, fuck, how did it happen again? I like been working so hard to try to make this not but happen. But you're, pl I mean... We're not going to unpack how terrible it is to be abused sexually, but I'm saying you're playing it that way isn't like horror or do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not in that moment. You're like, fuck. Yeah. Earlier gonna... it's horror. I think there is something to like now it's just happening so often that it's no longer a shock and no longer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think maybe there's some of that in there. Maybe you're victim blaming in that moment too. Yeah. Maybe what so. was maybe Pat? More. What was Patton's take on it? Like, was he sort of like, I, "This is just his power move on you"? I think so. Particular? I think it was like a. I think it was like a. I think it was an alpha power move. Or because because he wasn't known for doing that with. No, lowers, no, no, no. Right? No, it wasn't like a recurring thing with him. Right. And I'm also realizing now that like they have like an entire subsystem of items that are built for you to put over your dick if somebody's going to touch it on a film set. <laughs> yeah. But like Pat and I were just kind of talking and it, he I, he was like, so what should I do? And I was like, I don't know, just grab it, I guess. Like, because I like, but I mean, like, that's not super comfortable for him and it's yeah, not yeah. super comfortable for me, but I didn't really know that there was like the thing, like the yeah. dance belt or whatever. I, that's so funny because yeah. I literally, I sort of watched that scene and I was like, oh, I, I was wondering if he grabbed inside of your leg, if he just kind of like... Oh, no, he was full on. Like, no, nope, totally. No, full on. I love it. Full dick. Uh, that was Brian Husky, everybody looking very Wait, closely you're at you're not out dick. yet. <laughs> no. I like how you always try to ingratiate yourself to the vice president's office. Mm -hmm. Like, I think when you came in earlier, like, had a good pussy juice, like, how's it going? Oh, so yeah, that's in, like, about, the first, like, uh, oh, God. Something dripping with pussy juice, yeah. I think, to make the guys think you're one of them. Yeah, 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 like a dildo in a porn dungeon. Yes, dripping with pussy juice. Pussy juice. That's exactly like, it. Oh, dear God. And then the other one is, I think, in the hallway when Teddy confronts you, you're like, I fucking hate Ken. I want to wipe that neutral expression off yeah. his face. I want to say, okay, j my challenge to myself was to bring up succession three times, and here it comes. Mm -hmm. Oh, so, third one. Third one. So... Has anyone said to you that you, that Jonah is very similar to Nicholas Braun's Greg? Oh, character? yes, no, a hundred percent. Like in that, in that you are this sort of outsider, desperately wanting to be accepted. And I was just I, that the other night. I was like, holy shit! It's who's failing up in a way? Who's failing, failing up? up. Similar statures. Yeah. I uh, no, it's definitely come up before. Yeah, but I mean, there. I just I do because there's a lot of there's, there's a lot there's of a lot writers, of a lot of Veep writers on there, like Tony Roach, who's an executive producer. Of yeah. George Frank, Pritchett, George Pritchett, Frank Rich, Kelly yep. Hirsch. Uh, I mean, Jesse Armstrong yep. wrote ep season one, episode seven. Like, there's oh, a lot of wow. Veep yeah. in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, love seeing Callie's name. I think I brought that up last week. Yeah, she's now a staff. She was a staff writer on this year. Oh, cool. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah. So, um, it, I mean, like, it's like one of those things where it's like. It's somewhere in there that the characters are similar, but the yeah. shows are different enough that it's like, I think if it was a shorter guy, nobody would really make that much of a but it's connection. Interesting. It's interesting that they make use of the same. It 
they're similar in that type they're, or something. They're they're these gigantic toxic machines <laughs> of power, you know. And then and it is about the people trying to get in that slipstream. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and there's yeah. and there's something there's something really funny to someone just desperately offering themselves up over and over again. Because he just on the last episode I watched he he had some line that was sort of like you know it been very similar to sort of like you know the biggest dildo at the sex dungeon dripping wet yes. kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> In trying to be one of the guys with the, with the and the it just sweets. never really works. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. Really disgusting brothers. It's yeah. like, oh, that's a terrible name. <laughs> yeah, you know, he what tries I mean? to be cool a little bit with the family. Yeah, like, um, we got to wrap this up. Yeah, okay. uh, Brian Husky, thank you so much for being here. Thanks so much. for I'm going to double down on being happy for Brian to be here. I'm, I'm doubling down. I love. That. I'm walking. I'm walking that back. Yeah, I'll take it. Um, yeah. I'll take Leon West in the house. And this thank you. is second so in command of Every Watch podcast, where we look at the show from the point of view of the lowest rung on a very high ladder. God, it just rolls off the tongue. Garbage. I uh, find us wherever you find podcasts. Yep. Um, you can rate, review, and subscribe. Leave us five stars because we just because honestly we're empty vessels and we need that validation. Yeah, four. It um, helps. Four implies something weird. Uh, and then I don't know. Ask us <laughs> questions. Second in command. ATC at gmail.com if you want to ask us questions there or you can find that subreddit all right yeah peace peace succession <laughs>